I think in general in life, we can place an awful lot of importance on what other people think of us, you know, their opinions, their impressions, their views of who we are and what we like, they matter to us. And I guess this is a good thing because it helps us to be self-aware, to consider how we come across to others. And if we hear someone say something positive to or about us, it can make a real difference to our self-esteem. It can be a real encouragement to us. On the other hand, though, more critical or, or cutting comments can have a real impact on us too. In particular, it seems because we tend to dwell on and, and remember the negative comments much more than the positive ones we might receive. And this starts very early on in life. For example, back when I was in my first year of junior school, when I got my school report, and here it is on the screen, and here it is in the flesh. That was the extent of a school report back in the day, wasn't it? Just half a sheet of A4, a couple of lines for you. When I got my school report from my first year junior school, there were lots of nice comments on there from uh, Mr. Slater, my teacher, about how I was doing. And yet at the time, and to this day, the one that stuck with me was the negative one, which was about my performance in PE. Indeed, Mr. Slater had this to say about me. PE, tries hard, but slightly below average. <laughs> now, talk about damned with faint praise or whatever, I don't know. That may not sound much, but when you're a seven-year-old boy who thinks he's going to be a footballer or whatever, that... To be told you're below average, especially if you should have seen my class, this really was a low bar. <laughs> I was failing to attain, I tell you. And I can remember feeling pretty gutted about this. And I think actually it, it did affect my confidence going through school, especially with sport, because you think, that's, that's my label. What's the point? I'll just hide from the ball, really, and I won't necessarily join in with team games. As I say, what other people say or think about us, that can have a big impact, it seems, on what we think about ourselves. And yet with this in mind, I wonder what you'd say if you were asked what you thought God thinks of you. If God were to describe you, what do you think he might say? What words would he use? Would he say you're kind and caring? Would he say you're loving? Would he say you're good company, good fun, considerate, generous, encouraging? Or do you think he'd describe you as below average, perhaps? You know, someone who gets things wrong more than they get things right. Maybe God might say sometimes you can be selfish or grumpy and not very nice. Now, imagine we'll each have answers to that. I'm not going to ask us to share with each other what we might think of that one. But I guess a connected question to that of how God might describe us would be, how would you describe God? And that to me is probably a key question because what we think of God is likely to shape what we feel God thinks about us. So for example, if our idea of God is that he's actually quite distant, quite hard to please, even quite angry, then I imagine that overall we'll think he'll be fairly hacked off with us. That will be a disappointment to God. And if we feel that, that's quite a hard thing to live with. If our idea of God is that he's not really interested in the details or the minutiae of our lives, then I imagine we'll think that overall God doesn't really care too much about us. And again, that can be a hard, even sad thing to live with. However, if our idea of God is that he's kind and compassionate, as we were just reading from that psalm, you know, with genuine affection for us, then that will instead give us confidence and hope, knowing that no matter how hard things get, we're not alone, because we have a God who's on our side, who's more than willing and able to help us. Or if we think about God as being loving and patient, then that too will give us a cause for optimism in life, that no matter how many times we muck up, there will always be the offer of forgiveness and hope for a better, brighter way ahead. I'd suggest who we think God is will therefore have a profound impact on how we see ourselves and how we approach life. 
are we truly someone who is below average, doomed to always disappoint God? Or are we someone who is known and loved and liked by God? You know, being cheered on by an encouraging, affirming God. And indeed, the best way to understand exactly who God is and therefore how we are to see ourselves is to look at the life and person of Jesus because Jesus is what God looks like in the flesh. That seems to be one of the main reasons why Jesus came to live among us, to show us who God truly is. And I think Jesus knew this as part of his mission. Indeed, on one occasion, Jesus explicitly asked his disciples who they thought he was. Indeed, here's a brief clip of that very conversation from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. It's interesting, Jesus says Peter's blessed when he clocks who Jesus is, not just in a kind of knowledge way, but it seems there's a blessing on us that comes with that. Indeed, Jesus asks his disciples who they say he is, partly, I think, because he knows that unless they understand him and what he truly thinks of them, then they'll never be able to live the life or be the people he longs for them to be. And more than that, though, if they can understand who Jesus truly is, then they will understand who God is and what God is like. So the good news, I'd say, is that when we look at Jesus, we see someone and we therefore see that God is immensely, indescribably loving and kind and compassionate and caring. He's someone who consistently stands up for those who are being bullied. He champions those on the fringes, those who are left out. He's passionate about helping us to get the most out of life, but also more than willing to get down in the dirt and pick us up when things go wrong, even if that means going through that dirt, going through death even, so that we can ultimately live. And if that's what God's like, and I believe it is, then that means that you and I are all equally loved and valued, known and cared for, by him. That means we're not defined by the inevitable things that will get wrong, but by our identity as God's children, loved and embraced by him, a God who thinks we're anything but below average. And so my prayer is that the truth of that love for us will shape not only how we see God and shape how we see ourselves, but also shape how we live our lives seeking to see each other through God's eyes as people of immense value and worth as we seek to share God's love with all those who God has given us to live alongside.